what do you get when you take the world of Harry Potter and combine it with the PlayStation 1? Harry Potter and the PS1. But what if you take that and make a sequel to it? With the first game selling over 8 million copies and becoming the 6th best selling game on the PS1, putting it above games like Crash, Bandicoot and Resident Evil, naturally there was going to be a sequel on the way. Just like its predecessor, it got a version on every single system at the time. The Game Boy Color still had a turn based RPG, the PC got another action adventure game and the GBA got um... Yeah, I still don't know what I'm looking at. With the year not being 2002, you'd think there would also be a game on the 6th generation of consoles, right? Well, you'd be correct. But we also got one on the PS1 for some reason, two whole years after the PS2 came out, which is the version we're looking at today. Harry Potter and the Chamber of Secrets was again developed by Argonite Games, of Star Fox fame. What's impressive to me is how both the movie and the game were released exactly a year after the Philosopher's Stone game and movie, respectively. So should we be worried in regards to the game? Let's find out. The game follows an abridged plot of the book. I say book because I noticed certain details are in the books but not in the movies. It begins with Harry's summer coming to an end when he gets a visit from a house elf named <clears throat> a house elf named Dobby who warns him not to come to school tomorrow. Suddenly, Ron and his brothers pull up in a flying car to rescue Harry from his abusive family. The game begins in the Weasley house where we have to learn the basics all over again. First thing you'll notice is how the presentation has gotten a huge upgrade. First of all, Harry talks. Yeah, he was mostly muted in the last game aside from when he was casting spells, and he sure is a smart ass too. The characters still look janky as hell but man, these environments continue to look great, especially in outdoor areas where there's huge structures. After harassing the Weasley's chickens for a while, we continue learning the basics from the last game. The gameplay is exactly the same with some brand new additions. The first one is the minigames. The developers must have been real proud of them because we're forced into one before we even get to cast a fucking spell. The other more fun addition is wizard duels. You're pitted in a 1v1 where you and your opponent run back and forth while casting Flipendo at each other. It really requires some decent footwork and gets kinda difficult as the game goes on. It might look goofy as fuck but hey, it's still better than the duel in the movie. Expelliarmus! Now that we have all the basics in, it's time to head to school via flu powder. What's funny is how instead of dropping the powder while standing in the fireplace, Harry instead just runs into an active fire and then teleports onto the slide. Which, uh, uh this slide looks kind of familiar, but I, I don't know why. Oh man. In this version, Harry and Ron don't even miss the train. They just decide to fly the fucking car to school. Looks like we found the train, Ron. <laughs> Scratch the paintwork or my dad will kill me. Harry and Ron end up making it to school late and get confronted by Ew. Why are his fingers shaped like that? Is his hand made out of paper? Why is it flat? I think it's time to talk about the worst change to the presentation. In between levels, we get these still images while narrator explains the story. In the last game, we got simple 2D illustrations similar to what you'd get in a children's book. Someone at Argonaut Games must have hated them because they instead went with these horrible 3D renders that look awful even for 2002. I'll defend the character models till the end of time but I cannot do the same for these godforsaken 3D renders. It's a shame too because looking at the concept art shows that they had designs similar to the last game ready and they looked great. We finally made it to Hogwarts and this is where the game really starts. The school has gotten a redesign over the summer and it's so much better. The school feels twice as big and there's secrets everywhere. I was supposed to be following Ron but I couldn't help but to go through these hidden passageways that led to secret levels. At the end of these levels you'll always be rewarded with witches and wizards cards which there's more of compared to the last game. Speaking of these levels, some of these can get creepy as fuck. Take this one for example. The level starts off and the music is kinda eerie, but I didn't pay much attention to it. As we keep going, we find this painting warning us not to go through in the most serious way imaginable. I'm warning you, don't come through here, go away. Inside said painting is a singular lever that we have to pull in order to proceed. On the way back, the same painting reiterates how we really should have not pulled that lever. I hope you haven't pulled that lever, young man. We ignore her warning and proceed through the level till we come to this room with some rats running around. As we start to attack them, the music begins to ramp up to a dramatic level. Yeah. 
Like, what the fuck? Why? You can see in the footage that I started freaking out. I thought something was coming after me. <laughs> Jesus, I need a break. No time for that though, cause it's time for herbology class. Something I didn't mention in the last video was how classes worked. All classes started off with an obstacle course followed by a timing minigame where you learned a spell, and then finally putting the new spell to the test by casting at once. It's similar in this game except for the last step. Instead of only casting the spell once, we're put through a level where we have to cast the spell multiple times. Casting spells isn't as context sensitive as it was last time, but it's still pretty easy. The spells we learn are mostly just replacements for Flipendo and Wingard Leviosa that are automatically used on specific enemies. But I guess when you think about it, they're still very context sensitive, if not just more visually interesting. Remember when Ron accidentally cast a spell on himself that made him puke slugs? Well, uh, that's a level in this game for some reason. We just have to follow Ron to Hagrid's hut while he throws up the entire time. It's hilarious seeing fucking Rupert Grint and Daniel Radcliffe's digitized faces on here. Oh man, and I can't believe I've gone this long without bringing up Professor Lockhart, who Harry really doesn't seem to like. Gosh, look at the time! We'd better get to Professor Lockhart's defense against the Dark Arts class. Do we have to? On our way to Lockhart's class, Harry begins to hear voices in his head. You know, like any other 12 year old. Let me kill you. Nothing much happens during Lockhart's class, but we really get to see how egotistical this man is, with him having pictures of himself all over his classroom and office. <laughs> also, I really love his goofy ass run. A scene that was taken straight from the book is nearly Headless Nick's death day party, where we get to see how much of an asshole Peebs really is. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, Harry just doesn't give a shit. Alright, it's time to make a polyjuice potion, but first we need to gather the ingredients. Alright, alright, where do we get them from? Do we do we steal them from class? Or, or from a troll in a dungeon? Come on, where do we find these things? Nah, this time around it's actually not too bad. Thankfully the bank is closed so we don't have to deal with that again. But, like, that's wild, because what if rent is due? You literally can't withdraw your money. Maybe they use wizard ATMs? I don't know. I'm sure it's explained in the book somewhere. But, thankfully, we don't need money this time. The first shop gives us leeches for free, for killing pixies that were terrorizing the shop. But the second store lets us keep the flies as long as we're able to catch them. Thanks for the free ingredients, but wow! Dude, you suck at your job! Alright, got the polyjuice potions, and it's time to disguise ourselves as Slytherins. Dude, I love how they had the voice actors do impressions of what they thought Crab and Goyle sounded like. Hermione, are you okay? Turns out Harry and Ron don't know where the Slytherin common room is, so instead we follow this guy through the most treacherous and insane hallway that Hogwarts has to offer. Like dude, this is what the poor Slytherins have to go through every morning before getting to class? I thought this was supposed to be the safest place on earth. This is gonna sound weird as hell. But the part that I remember the most vividly from when I was a kid is this next level. So we come into class on Valentine's Day and Professor Lockhart tells us that he has a gift for us. But that gift is Valentine's Day cards delivered personally by these cupid things. It's hilarious too because this section mirrors that level from the last game where we were being chased by a fucking troll. But instead of running to avoid getting murdered, we're trying to run from this. His eyes are as green as a fresh pickled toad. His hair is as dark as a black fold. I wish he was mine, he's really divine. The hero who conquered the Dark Lord. Okay, we're up to the part where we have to sneak out of school to go as Hagrid if he was one that opened the Chamber of Secrets. This section is very similar to the stealth section from the last game, except ramped up a bit. Instead of simply looking for keys to unlock doors, we have to look for different switches to press in order to progress. I like this iteration a lot more because it requires more strategy. I feel like there's less hiding spots and there's also multiple professors covering more ground. For example, there was a switch that would only unlock the gate for a couple of seconds. So you have to time it perfectly to where you can press the switch, sneak past Snape, and still make it through the gate in time. Okay, I promise this is the last time I'll compare both games, but I really have to praise the improvement made in the Forbidden Forest. In the Philosopher's Stone, the Forbidden Forest was a very short level with meh visuals. But the Forbidden Forest in this game is an incredible step up when it comes to the atmosphere. The music is super creepy and you can even hear wolves and laughter in the distance, reminding you that there's more in the forest than just the spiders. Speaking of which, 
Instead of fighting defecating turtles, we fight against these giant, terrifying fucking spiders that definitely contributed to my arachnophobia as a kid. There's also these glorious set pieces that include so much verticality, unlike anything we've seen in these games so far. I also want to mention this final section that includes us sneaking past a group of trolls from a top-down perspective. It's not too difficult and honestly a little glitchy, but I figured I'd mention it since this section kinda comes out of nowhere and again, it's unlike anything this series has done and will probably ever do again. We make it past the trolls and find Aragog, who swears Hagrid's innocence but won't let us leave without a fight. This boss fight is interesting because we aren't fighting Aragog directly, but instead we're trying to break his web by destroying the trees holding it together. And while we attack the trees, we have to avoid Aragog's children because they're gonna be trying their hardest to eat us. Also, what I found really notable is how after destroying the web, Aragog kinda just walks away. Game adaptations usually have no problem breaking continuity and killing characters who didn't die in their books or movies, but this game is trying to stay as close to the original novels as it possibly could. Okay, it's time once and for all to close the Chamber of Secrets, but we're gonna need some serious backup. But uh, but all we can get is Professor Lockhart. But we have to drag him out of his office because this fucker is trying his hardest to keep his distance. There's traps all over the freaking place along with killer knights, and there's a ferocious monster that he keeps in a room with warning signs and everything. We finally make it to the girls' bathroom where Harry is able to open the Chamber of Secrets and we jump in to find, uh, um, damn, this still looks so familiar. Why does this look so familiar? We make it to the bottom, but Lockhart is so done with us that he forces us into a duel to the death. As much of a doofus Lockhart appears to be sometimes, he definitely put up the hardest duel in the game. I was already low in health when I got to this part, so it took a lot of concentration to beat him, especially with this memory charm that follows you through objects, and this overhead attack too that will absolutely hit you if you don't keep moving. It's time for our final challenge and we're putting everything we've experienced to the test. This includes fighting rats, knights, and even sneaking past more trolls. After all of that, we come across Tom Riddle, but more importantly, his giant fucking snake. We start off with simple flippendo spells, but it soon becomes obvious that it's not enough. That's when Dumbledore's Phoenix intervenes with a cool ass sword. Yeah, this is more like it. But Harry's tiny little arms aren't made for swinging blades, so instead we use the sword to reflect back the snake's venom. I even did a little emote for extra damage. After a fairly long fight, we're finally able to put down the beast and use a snake's venom to destroy Tom Riddle's diary, finally putting an end to the madness at Hogwarts, at least for this year. I'm not sure what the consensus about this game is, but it impressed the hell out of me. It managed to improve in every possible way and I ended up having a lot more fun with it compared to the last game. I also managed to get 100% but it was a bit of a shit show. I had to go back to every class and get an almost perfect score which took me an eternity. But after all that hard work, I was able to open this secret room that included some very nice looking concept art, which is at least a nice gesture. I know this game is overshadowed by its big brother on the PS2, but I seriously could not recommend this game enough to all Harry Potter fans, and hopefully give this game the love it deserves even over 20 years later.